We're going to talk a little bit more about floats. Again, better understanding of this. So let's say we have a variable called price. So we have a variable called price. And we want to store a decimal in it, like 10.17 for $10.17. We then want to print out this price. And we're going to see that it comes out to be 10.17, as you see there. Here it is written next. We want to override the previous price with the same number of transforming it, this into an integer. So let's say we want to change that into an integer. I'll just do copy paste. Copy. Keep everything there. So that'd be original. Then we want to convert this into an integer by doing this. INT stands for int. We're going to change that value into an integer. And it stores in. So the original one is going to print out the decimal form like we had before. Then this is going to convert it into an integer, so it should just print out as the integer of 10. So what's happening there, when we convert it to an integer, it chops off the cents. As far as the 17 cents, it chops off everything to the right of the decimal when we convert it to an integer. When we want to convert it back into a float, however, So we're going to take that price that we chopped off. So we're going to inherit that price that we just had. We can even type this in as price as well. So you can see it. 10.17. And it gets chopped off as an integer, so it's just 10. Then that 10 is what's stored in that price tag. So when we cover it back into a float, it turns into 10.0. We lose that 17 cents, as you could see, down here. Now, flotations, those are tend to be really good when you're interacting with a user or somebody that's going to be inputting information into your program. So it's always nice to use float instead of int, because int will always chop off that decimal. So what do I mean by actually interacting with the user? Let's say we have something like this. We want to collect the price from the user by doing input. How much money do you have in your wallet? print that price. So when we have that, since I'm storing it as a float, I'm going to say $6.17. So then it prints out $6.17. If I change this float into an in here, I type in that $6.17. We're going to get an error because our input it does, isn't an integer. It's not with a base 10. It's an invalid integer. So that won't work out too well. However, if I run this program again by using just an integer, like I got $10. It will work for us. So be careful when using integer and float. It's best to use float to worry about in, uh, decimals and so on and so forth when we're interacting with your user.